Wake up early. Anyways, this is up. There is still more than 600 days to go until the 2020 election. As the days tick by, an historically diverse and crowded field of Democrats battling it out to become the party's champion. We started with more than two dozen potential candidates, and then the field started to shrink. First, it was slow. Then this week, a deluge of people declining to run, including Eric Holder, Jeff Merkley, Mike Bloomberg, Sherrod Brown, and Hillary Clinton. As we wait for decisions from some heavy hitters like Joe Biden and Beto O'Rourke, there is still a packed field of official candidates struggling to set themselves apart from each other. Some of them, including former Colorado Governor John Hickenlooper, have said they reject labels, but that can get awkward. Would you call yourself a proud capitalist? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I, you know, again, the labels, I'm not sure uh, any of them fit. I'll break it down even more. Do you consider yourself a capitalist? Well, again, the labels, you know, I'm a small business person. Do you consider yourself a capitalist and does capitalism work? Well, I think I, I, I don't look at myself with a label. Shouldn't have been difficult. Let me tell you a bit about John Hickenlooper. He was a geologist. Then he founded a brew pub. He eventually became a real estate and venture capital investor. He is, I think we can all say, by definition, a capitalist. Well, John Hickenlooper's comments stand in stark contrast to what we've heard from another Democrat we are continuing to watch. That is former Congressman Beto O'Rourke. He told reporters, quote, I'm a capitalist. I don't see how we're able to meet any of the fundamental challenges that we have as a country without, in part, harnessing the power of the market. Sophia Nelson, let me start with you. You were there. You were on Morning Joe yesterday as all of this was unfolding. I was struck by Brett Stevens's column in the New York Times today, picking up on what was happening on Morning Joe yesterday. He said, John Hickenlooper ought to be a poster child for American capitalism. He should be. And we were, like I said in the break, we were snickering a little bit and in all like, dude, just spit it out. Say it. It's a good thing. It will separate you from the left of the crowd, if you will. Others who don't probably consider themselves capitalists. But I think the bigger issue for the Democrats is a couple things. One, I don't get this whole Beto thing. Can I just be honest? Okay. He lost the election in Texas. I'm old fashioned. I look at the Electoral College. I want to know what you can bring and what you bring to the ticket. And I don't see how Beto, I know he can raise money, but you didn't win in Texas. So I don't get why we're talking about him. I consider him a non-starter. So that's just my opinion. <laughs> but I think that um, Joe Biden, this is his if he wants it. And I think he needs to really make a decision sooner rather than later because he keeps dragging it out and people are getting annoyed by that. Gene Scott, how'd you react to, to that, the, the unease uh, with which he had? Uh, you couldn't claim that he couldn't claim the term. He didn't want to associate himself with the term. How surprised were you by that? What does it say about labels. He says he's a no labels guy. Can you be a no labels guy uh, in a Democratic primary? Well, I was very surprised because we know as recently as I believe 2012, he pride, prided himself on being a moderate. And there are quite a few Democrats, quite frankly, who are moderates who are more anxious about the leftward tilt of the Democratic Party and are looking for a Democrat who can proudly say that they're a capitalist and make a message and articulate a message that capitalism works for everybody or can work for everybody. And this was his opportunity to do so. I don't think that he's going to win people further on the left by not admitting that he's a capitalist. He puts himself in a position to lose the people that were most likely to vote for him anyway. Mara, you agree with that? Yeah. I largely, I, I do agree with that. I mean, I think you don't have to twist yourself into a pretzel to kind of speak to the moment. And I will give Beto over a credit for that. What he said actually was, is I think exactly where um, Democrats who want to get votes on the left of the party should be, which is, Yes, I'm a proud capitalist. That's fine. I don't like labels. But I'm interested in harnessing the power of the market to help address income inequality, which is the central issue of the time that we're in and really the central issue of, I think, what this campaign is about. Because you have to speak to the income inequality that is creating anxiety in this country in all parts, from New York City to rural areas within Trump's base. And I think that is what the left of the party is, is really trying to speak to, whether or not they get that right or their approach is the best way, I'm not sure. But I think someone like Hickenlooper might want to sit down with, you know, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez <laughs> and really kind of understand <laughs> what the heart of the issue is here. Bill Cohen, what does it say about centrism? That and what we've seen this week. Mike Bloomberg saying he's not going to run. In response to that, Howard Schultz, who continues to no. No, uh, uh, wait in the wings, like saying that that indicates that you can't run as a centrist so, in either so of these parties. Howard Schultz, uh, you know, blew it for billionaires uh, every, everywhere who wanted to run for president. That's probably why Mike uh, is not running. <laughs> uh, look, uh, 
Uh, Joe Biden has a more or less of an open lane in the centrist lane if he wants. You would have thought Hickenlooper would have wanted that lane. He's obviously a capitalist. He's made a lot of money. I mean, I don't understand. We're all we're all capitalists. What it's are we the system in which we live here yeah. now? I mean, in the whole world, it's not just here. I mean, it's sort of the victorious system of our of our era. And maybe one day it will fall apart and we'll try something else. But I mean, to pretend that you're not now on the margins, Mar, you're absolutely right. We have to fix income inequality. We have to make sure people have health care if they need it. I mean, we have to fix the problems of capitalism, just like you know what I wrote in, in my book, Why Wall Street Matters. We have to fix the problems of Wall Street, but we wouldn't want to live in a world if Wall Street wasn't doing what it's doing. So let's not just denigrate it to denigrate it to try to score political points. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.